Okay, hi everyone. So last week I already uh, mentioned about EOQ and the insights of EOQ and also the replenishment policies. Do you still remember how many uh, re replenishment policies that we have? Two, right? Yeah, so the first one is continuous review and the second one is peri uh, periodic review. And I also explain uh, the difference between them. So why we why do we have to do replenishment? Because we want to have enough products to sell to, to the customer, right? We want to satisfy the customer demand and it means we want to reduce like we want to achieve the highest customer service it means we need to reduce the out of stock or shortage so we need to make sure that we have enough products to offer to provide to the customer so how the shortage happens Earlier, when we study in uh, about EOQ, EOQ is uh, EOQ's assumption is demand is constant. However, in the real life, in the reality, we can see that the the demand is not certain; is always uncertain. Right, so that is the reason why the shortage happened. So here. So we can see during the lead time Here is the lead time and during the lead time the demand su suddenly increase for example it's because the demand is uncertain so if the demand during the lead time suddenly increase uh, this part the the red part so this area is the demand that was not met it means we lack up the in uh, the products to sell to the customer in this area so this when the demand was not met we call it is shortage okay so what will happen like what are the retailer or manufacturer will loss if the shortage happens so they might lose their customer they lose their customer the customer can go to competitors and when they need when they attract the customer they need to pay for like marketing or advertisement fees right advertisements but now they just lose their customers so they pay for marketing or advertisement fee for it, nothing and now they have to do it again to attract other uh, customers so we don't want shortage happen so how we can avoid the probability of shortage happens so here uh, I give you four possibility in the real life when the demand during the lead time is uncertain so the first case is uh, when the demand okay let's show you everything so in these two cases is when shortage happen right and this is like it's maybe in acceptable like in a small the gap is more but here is the situation become more serious and worse and here is when they have enough products to satisfy the demand during the lead time but here at this point it means they have extra products 
Okay. So in this case, do you still remember what is ROP? Is it the V of the point? I already explained uh, last week. So to avoid the shortage, what should we do? We should erase this one, right? So we should put some products in this area so that they can cover this area, the shortage one. That's why this area we call it safety stock. And to avoid the probability of shortage, we input, we set some safety stock. Okay. So let's see how we can calculate like how many we should put in safety stock in the case of uncertainty demand, uncertain demand. So we have the noti notations D is the average demand per period. Sigma D is the sen sorry standard deviation of demand per period, and L is the ordering lead time. So remember for me three these notations is very important, and we assume that the demand for each period I from 1 to L, we have L periods, is normally distributed with the mean, average mean, DI, with the standard deviation, sigma I, and the correlation, uh, rho IJ. And the total demand during the L periods is normally distributed with the LM, sigma L. So we have our uh, the demand is normally distributed with the mean di and sigma i if you learn business statistics or engineering pro probability and statistics you will uh, know the normal distributed right so here is the mean and here is the variance. Okay. Yeah, I just write D. And for the demand during lead time will be normally distributed with the mean DL and the variance DL square. Okay, so using the statistics, we can see that because uh, the demand is normally distributed, so we have the shape of a bell here. This one we already learned it in the statistic course, so we can see the blue, the blue are. Uh, color here is the desired cycle service level so for example they want 90% of the customer are satisfied like they can satisfy 90% of the customer so this the blue one will be 95% and this area is the out of stock or shortage it means the percent of customer they cannot satisfy shortage and this one will be equal to 5% right so the total here the total here is equal to 100% and we have this point the middle one is the average the mean demand over the time and here is the reorder point okay so here is how we apply the normal distribution normal distribution or statistics in inventory control 
So how can we uh, calculate the reorder point? The reorder point will be equal to the mean demand over the lead time plus the safety stock. Okay, please remember it for me. <coughs> and how you can determine uh, the point that I just told you earlier. Here I also say the service uh, I already write here the service level is the probability that the demand during the time will not exist the on hand inventory so earlier I give you example this is 95% it means that 95% the demand during the time will not exist on hand inventory it means 95% they can satisfy the customers okay and another 5% that is for stock out and how we can determine this point is will you use the normal distribution table the Z table and you can find the Z of 95% is equal to 1.645 here so you can check for example, the value is Z095, right? So you find the point that is nearest to 95. So it's here, 0 0.9495. So it's nearest to the 0 0.95. So we can see here Z will be equal to 1.64. So this point will be 1.64. Okay, 1.64. Or you can see our uh, euro point nine five is between euro point nine four nine five and euro nine five three five. Okay, never mind. Just our. Uh, just use this one, just use euro point sixty four is it's easier for you guys. Uh, this value euro point six six four five this one they use the value in the Excel not in the table. Okay. So do you know how to uh look at the Z table already? how to find the value of Z okay you just see for example if uh, you want 90% the service level is 90% so you look at 90% is here it's near to 8997 or 0 0.9066 so it's 1.28 or if you you use 1.32 is okay or you can use the average between 1.28 and 1.32 okay so we have our first we will consider the continuous review or we call it Q system and later we will uh, go to the periodic review system P so given the desired customer service level how we can determine the safety stock and the reorder point so we know that uh, the demand is normally distributed with the mean of demand and the variance let me the variance this one is standard deviation but in statistics we have to write like this that is here is the mean and here is the variance okay I hope that you haven't forget 
the knowledge from the business statistics yet. So we have L is the average lead time for replenishment. So we can calculate that. The demand during lead time is normally distributed uh, with the mean, the mean during lead time, the mean demand during lead time, and the variance during the lead time. Okay. And what is DL? DL is the mean during lead time. It will be equal to the demand multiplied by the lead time so for example uh, the demand is 100 per week unit per week and lead time is 2 weeks so we have demand during lead time will be 100 multiplied by 2 and is equal to 200 units okay so please uh, remember to c consistent the demand unit and the lead time units for example week and week day and day or year and year so it has to be consistent it has to be the same okay and how can we calculate a the variance of the uh, the demand during lead time this one so this is like dl is equal to d multiplied by l right so we will have sorry we will have d multiplied by l okay normally distributed with D multiplied by L and here also L multiplied by Sigma L squared so we can see here this is the mean of the demand during lead time and the variance is equal to sorry it should be D Sigma L square equal to L multiplied by sigma d squared so we can have that sigma l is equal to sigma d multiplied by square root of l so as long as you remember the root from the statistics it's easy for you to remember this formula in any case okay so we can calculate the safety stock it will be equal to uh, z is the service level value the z value you still remember here this value and multiply by the standard deviation l the uh, sigma l so how can we calculate this so we will have uh, the no normal distribution of the uh, customer service level multiplied by the standard deviation multiplied by the square root of lead time okay later we will use this formula to solve an example so that you can understand more and the reorder point will be equal to the demand during lead time plus the safety stock okay okay then let's look at this example the sf warehouse face weekly demand with the mean is equal to 5000 and the standard deviation is 500 so we have weekly demand okay that is d is equal to the mean is equal to 5000 and standard deviation is equal to 500 
and the lead time the lead time is two weeks lead time is two weeks this one is per week right so we can see the unit time the time unit is consistent between the demand and the lead time but however if they are different you have to convert it to the same time unit the fixed cost is ten thousand dollars per year uh, per order fixed order cost is ten thousand per order and it cost ten dollars to hold one check it in inventory for one year so the holding cost here is equal to ten dollars per unit and per year okay sf wants the stock out probability to be no higher than five percent for customer self satisfaction so it means the probability of stock out has to be less than or equal to five percent so the service the customer service level is equal to 95 percent right customer service level is equal to 95 percent okay what ordering policy do you recommend for sf what should safety stock be ensure a desired service level and when should be reordered so first let's calculate our the safety stock so do you still remember how to calculate the safety stock it will be equal to the z values multiplied by the standard deviation of l right and it will be equal to g 95 percent multiplied by square root of l that is two weeks multiply by standard deviation d that is 500 okay and this one you can use the value of 1.645 or 64 is okay multiply by square root of lead time multiply by the standard deviation so you will have the safety stock it's easy right when should be reordered so now we calculate the our uh, order quantity the optimal order quantity using eoq so we have q star will be equal to ah uh, sorry sorry reorder point we calculate the reorder order reorder point because they they ask us when should be reorder right so reorder point will equal to the demand during lead time plus the safety stop so demand during lead time is 5000 per week and demand uh, lead time is 2 weeks plus the safety stock is this number so you can calculate the reorder point so here i already uh, have you calculate uh, calculate here please calculate by yourself and see if your answer is correct okay so here safety stock is 1000 160 and you can calculate the real the point here so what is our conclusion when should be reordered so when the on hand inventory drop to one eleven thousand one hundred sixty unit we reorder Okay, that is the conclusion. Let's look at another example. 
assume that weekly demand for phones as BM, uh, BNM office supplies is normally distributed with a mean of 2500 and a standard deviation of 500 so we have the demand is no more distributed so the mean is 2500 and the variance is 500 squared here we only consider the standard deviation that is 500 in statistics, we know that standard deviation is sigma equal to 500. Then variance is equal or uh, is standard deviation square. So here we have 500 square. Okay. And the manufacturer takes two weeks to fill an order placed by B and M manager. So the lead time is two weeks. This one is week demand and the lead time is two weeks so the time you need is consistent so it's okay it's easy already the store manager currently orders 10,000 phones when the inventory on hand drops to 6,000 so it means the order quantity Q is equal to 10,000 units and the reorder point but when inventory drop to this point, reorder point equal to 6,000. Okay, so it means whenever it's drop to 6,000, they will make a new order. And the quantity, order quantity is 10,000. So here I already list the what kind of information we have and now evaluate the safety inventory and the average inventory carried by BNM so here we can calculate or uh, we know the formula that reorder points is equal to the demand during lead time plus the safety stock right and we have here the reorder point is 6000 and the demand during lead time is we have the demand in one week the weekly demand is 2500 and the lead time is two weeks so the de demand during lead times is mean the demand in two weeks is equal to 2500 multiplied by two and plus the safety stock so here we can calculate the safety stock is equal to 6000 minus 5000 so safety stock is 1000 okay the second one is the average inventory carried by BNM so how can we calculate the invent uh, the average inventory so first we have the inventory before ordering before okay before inventor uh, before ordering so we have the safety stock that is 1000 and after ordering they have after they have the uh, amount is the safety stock plus the order the order quantity that is 10000 right so we have we take the sum of before and after and divide by 2 because we take the average so we have 1000 plus 1000 plus 10000 and divide by 2 and it's equal to 6000 quantity 6000 6, unit or we can have the formula for this one is equal to safety stock plus q divided by 2 right here is safety stock and here is the q the order quantity so you can use this formula to calculate the average inventory however you have to understand the insight the background why we use this formula that is before we order the quantity we have is the safety stock that is 1000 and after that the quantity we have is the safety stock plus 
the order quantity, right? So before we have safety stock, after we have safety stock plus Q. So the average will be safety stock plus, um, plus safety stock plus Q divided by 2. So we will have safety stock plus Q divided by 2. Okay. So that is how you calculate the average inventory. So we just go through the continuous review Q system. And now we will see the uh, periodic review. So we can see, or I already mentioned about the difference between periodic and continuous. And here you can see here, the line here is the target stock level. It's like the vending machine example. So in vending machine, maybe the maximum you can put is 100 cans, 100 bottle. So the first the first time you go there and re and refill, they have 80 left. So it means the quantity you have to refill is 20. And the second time is maybe 60. Then you have to refill 40. So it depends on how many products they have left. They will refill the amount so that they can achieve their target stock level. Okay, so we we can calculate the order quantity is equal to the target inventory level minus the inventory po position, right? Like here, the inventory level is the target stock level is 100 and the inventory on hand is 80. So the quantity we refill is 20. So here we have the formula target inventory level uh, is o, that, uh, OUL minus the inventory position IP and how we can calculate the inventory position inventory position will equal to on hand inventory plus the schedule receives minus the back order. Okay, so SR stands for schedule receive and BO stands for back order. So what is the schedule receive? Schedule receive is are the products that you already did order in the past. You already make order with your supplier, and the supplier uh, promise to deliver the products to you in a day in the future. For example, you make an order yesterday. You make an order of one hundred unit units, and they will deliver deliver one hundred units to you tomorrow. because we will receive it tomorrow so we will put it in the schedule received okay on hand inventory is what you have on your hand now what is back order back order is the order from the customer but you haven't had the product to deliver to them yet and you will deliver the product to them immediately whenever you have their enough products okay that's why we will calculate the invent position is equal to the hot on hand what you have now plus what will you what you will receive in the near future and minus what you what the customer already ordered but you haven't delivered yet okay let's look at this example there is a back order of five 36 inch color TV set at a distribution center. There is no on hand inventory, so on hand inventory is equal to zero. And now is time to review how much should be reordered if 
the target inventory level is equal to 400 and there is no schedule receive so schedule receive is equal to euro and the back order is 5 right back order is 5 so we calculate we have the uh, formula sorry Q is equal to the target inventory level minus minus the on hand on hand inventory plus the sketcher received minus back order so we will have 400 minus on hand is euro plus sketcher is euro minus 5 so we have Q is equal to 405 units so they should order 405 units okay and how can we uh, calculate the order quantity in the case that there is a lead time so it's quite similar as the uh, queue system as the continuous review so here the difference is only uh, in continuous review we only consider lead time but here we will consider uh, the periodic time that is t so all the formula is the same but the lead time will be replaced by lead, lead time plus the periodic time that is the review time that is t okay so we will have the same that are the target level the target inventory level is equal to the demand plus the safety stock but demand during in continuous is the demand during lead time but here is the demand during lead time and the periodic time and the review time that d plus t okay so just remember it for me it's totally the same but only the time will be different in test of only lead time here lead time plus the review time so safety stock how can you deal or calculate the safety stock safety stock is the same formula that is d multiplied by the standard deviation but during the time plus t okay so it's standard deviation l plus t is equal to l plus t square root multiplied by d standard deviation d okay so let's uh, look at this example so it will be easier or uh, for you to understand those formula how to apply those form formulas and how what is t t is the time how many times they will how long they will refill once okay so it's the gap between uh, two order placing so the first point is when they place the first order and the, the next order so it's the time between two orders and how we can calculate it t will be equal to the order quantity uh, divided by the demand this one we already learned it before right okay we'll go back with the example the demand for an item has a mean of 200 units a week and standard deviation of 40 units so the demand is normally distributed as uh, with the mean 200 and the standard deviation 40 so variance is 40 square 
stock is checked every four weeks so the time is four weeks they will check it every four weeks and lead time is constant as two weeks so lead time is two weeks so the demand here is for a week the periodic time is four weeks and the lead time is two weeks so it's weeks so the time you need is consistent between the demand uh, review time and lead time so it's easy we don't need to convert the unit time describe a policy that will give 95 percent service level so it means ninety five percent is here right and the stock out is five percent so we will have z ninety five percent is equal to zero point six four five okay and the holding cost is two dollars per week so what is the cost of safety stock with this policy so at first we need to calculate the safety stock right safety stock is equal to z 95 percent multiplied by the standard deviation of t plus l and is equal to one six four five multiplied by t is four weeks plus l is two weeks take the square root multiply by 40 so we will have the standard or uh, the safety stock let's see safe is equal to safety stock is 116 unit 161 units and the holding the cost of safety stock is will be equal the 161 multiplied by 2 right and it's equal to 322 dollars okay so here i even give you the solution how to order the uh, how to uh, calculate the order size when there are 200 units in stocks okay, but for the question here you only need to care about this and this one and this is for you to earn uh, for your reference if you have more uh, questions about this example okay okay how we use p and q system in products so let me give you an example about p and q let's say you uh, you ride motorcycle and this is the empty this is full and you will have the red light let's say here the first the first case is you will refill your gas every saturday and the second one is you will refill the gas when the red light drop at a e empty so which one is p system and which one is q system or which one you use the continuous review and which one you use periodic reviews here this one this case you use periodic right periodic and this one you use continuous so i have a question for you in reality in practice 
which one, which system, which review policy is more popular in the company, which one, and why, okay? Periodic review or continuous review is more popular in the reality and why? So here I uh, take some note for you when you should use P system and when you should use Q system. So here we use P system when the orders must be placed at a specific, specified intervals. Okay. So it means when we have uh, like limitation about the capacity, like vending machine, we need to, like we have the interval for for them, from zero to one hundred, for example. So we use the P system. Or we use the P system when the multiple items are ordered from the same suppliers. Or we call it joint repl uh, replenishment. So go back with the vending machine again. So they have like different items, like multiple items are ordered at the same from the same suppliers, right? For example, they have our drinks, they have snacks, and they have different uh, milk, so on and so forth. So it's when we use a piece system. And we use the piece system for in ex inexpensive items, or for uh, not like valuable products, okay? So I will write the question here in products P or Q is more popular and why? Please help me answer these questions, okay? So we can see that inventory management is very important, either for suppliers or for buyer. So for example, like I consider the supplier and the retailer. Okay, so if the retailer order a lot, they will have to pay a lot for uh, inventory costs for holding costs, right? And for supplier because they don't know how much the retailer will order so they, they will manufacture first and in the case if they manufacture a lot they will have to uh, pay for a lot for inventory as well but if they only produce a little they will like of products to provide retailer or if retailer order just a little they will have shortage cost because they cannot offer enough products to uh, the customers so they think of a way how they can uh, optimize like two of them share the risk and share the cost and we because we learned earlier the insights of EOQ model that when they pull this inventory, the inventory will cut in half, right? If they pull four times, then the inventory will cut in half. So that's why they try to cooperate with each other between the retailer and the suppliers or retailer and buyers so that they can reduce the inventory cost, but also they can receive are the demand, the true forecast demand, like share information with each other. So what is VMI? 
VMR is vendor managed inventory. This is the method they use to control the inventory better, like they cooperate with each other. So here, the wholesaler will control the stocks and send, they will send their inventor, uh, send the products to retailer when they need. So this one is between the wholesaler and retailer. Wholesaler will keep the inventory and when the retailer need, they will deliver to the retailers. So what is the benefit? What is the benefit of our VMI? Here between supplier and retailer, they will have wholesaler. And wholesaler will be the person who keep the inventory for them. Here the supplier can coordinate the stocks over a wider, a wider area. So it means, our, for example, wholesaler 1, wholesaler 2, wholesaler 3, or distribution centers, okay, retailer. So when they don't have enough products in, in wholesaler 1 to deliver to the retail, to retailer, they can combine the inventory, the product in wholesaler 2 as well. So they can control the whole systems. So stock, they can control the stock or the shortage better if they combine them together. And also when they, for example, we have several invent uh, retailers, so they can uh, de de develop their delivery routing the the routing vehicle route or the vehicle routing problem so they can know the car the truck should go to retailer one or retailer two or re uh, retailer three first so they can develop a route for uh, their vehicle for their truck so they can minimize the cost minimize the distance so they can optimize their supply chain and also, since the ret retailer will just tell the uh, supplier when they need the product, so it means there's information they can base on that one to receive the information about the demand, like the true demand. So they know how much they should provide, how much they should uh, manufacture. So they can minimize the shortage cost or holding cost and they can give the customer a consistent customer service like it will be stable they will always have enough products to offer customers okay so that is all the information about inventory uh, management that I want to deliver to you guys I hope that you will understand, uh, get the idea how to control the inventory and how important it is and how we implement the inventory management in the uh, real life.